So it's Mandy and we are out here on the mule farm. I've stepped out of Centerville and I have a new friend I want you to meet. This is Slow Gin Fizz, or Ginny as she's known. And she ah, loves treats. Let's go get a tour. So we have come in the exclusive privately owned Mule Skinners Club. And I am here with Mr. Stutzman, or as known, the Mule Man. Tell us why this club is named the Mule Skinners Club. Well, it's named the Mule Skinners Club because the definition is that it's a person that's involved with riding and training and working and driving mules. Very good. And from what I understand, there are big things happening in Centerville. Tell us what is coming to Centerville. Well, we hope what's coming to Centerville will be the biggest attraction that's maybe ever been in Centerville. It is the 100th anniversary since the last time the famous 20 mule team borax wagons that the older folks will all remember. Uh, it's the first time that they're coming back to the East Coast in 100 years. The last time they were on the East Coast was in 1917 for President Woodrow Wilson's inauguration parade. And what is the 20 mule team? What does it consist of and where does it come from? Well, it comes from Mountain Death Valley, California, and the 20 mule team in the late 1800s, it would drive 165 miles one way into the desert from a train station, and it would collect borax, which is a mineral that's natural in the desert, and they would load the thir over 36 tons of borax on the wagons, and they would, mules would turn around and pull them back another 165 miles. There were five teams, and uh, all your parents and my parents will remember uh, there were many famous actors from Ronald Reagan, Clint Eastwood, Leonard Nimoy and a bunch of others that got started on a program called Death Valley Days. Death Valley Days. When are they coming to the 4-H Park? Well, they're coming to the 4-H Park uh, for July 2nd. They're gonna, there's gonna be a public showing where everybody can come out and touch and ask questions of the mule skinners. They will be there from 12 o'clock to four o'clock. Mm -hmm. It's free to the public. We're encouraging everybody to come out. There's nobody alive today that's ever seen these, this team on the East Coast. And there'll be nobody alive today that will ever see them if they do get to come back for their 200th anniversary. So this is a really special historic event that we hope that children can get pictures of so they can show it to their grandchildren. Definitely, so it's something exclusive for all ages to check out. Absolutely, the younger, the more apt they will they'll grow up and understanding what a mule is, and the older, it'll be great memories because there's a lot of people today that are still watching the reruns of Death Valley Days. Perfect, so also there are some sponsorship opportunities um, to sponsor to help get this 20 mule team here to Centerville um, and then move on to Washington to the 4th of July parade. Um, there are a couple um, phone numbers, a contact, uh, Ms. Stutzman herself, as well as their email. You can check out to the link below and uh, donate to this wonderful event that they're hosting. So we're gonna go out and get an exclusive tour of the mule farm. Okay, so we're touring the farm about mules, but I mean, check out this fire engine. Mr. Stutzman, this yes. is pretty cool. This is a 1920 Stutz fire truck, and it's the last one in the world. There were 12 of them originally made, and that won the International Firefighters Competition in 1920 among 12 other fire companies in a rigid test that all the fire companies developed together, and every fire company had the opportunity to vote, and they all voted this the number one fire truck. It pumped water in competition for 12 hours nonstop. So who needs a smart car when you got an old fire truck? So we got the privilege to see a three week old mule right on the farm. This is Jägermeister and he's just made his grand entrance into the world just three weeks ago. And he's out here hanging in the sunshine with his mom. So we are taking an exclusive mule carriage ride out on the farm. And this is Pearl and Pat. And they're gonna give us a little tour around the farm. I'm learning that they're trained for voice command, right, Mr. Sussman? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> in fact, the 20 mule team that you'll see driving here in the 4th of July, they're all voice command. They uh, have a jerk line, they'll turn left to right, but basically the teamster, Bobby Tanner, um, will holler a command to the lead mule 
and that's how they're basically stopped and all that. It'll be ho if Mary's a mule, ho Mary, that type of thing. And and G and haw um, is an old way that the farmers, uh, it's a language that all the animals would recognize because they're distinctly sounding different. Got and it. when the farmer was plowing, he might have his hands full on the plow of the implement. Okay. So he needed to get them turned, and he would say, we'll say here in this turn here, we'll say G and they'll, they'll go left. And then Hall would go to the right. Pat, Pearl, G. And just like that, they turn. That's it, yes. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and then they'll, with the, the hoe, with, if I told them to, they'd stop. And then if you tell them to stand, and they'll stand. Um, these mules don't stand as long as I'd like them to. In theory, you'd like your mules when you get off your carriage, you say stand, and they would stand there until you came back. Right. Whether that be an hour or whatever. They're a little more active. It's just a matter that they haven't been trained to stand. Got it. An interesting piece of trivia you might be interested in, Mandy, is the term teamster. Uh -huh. A person that drove mules or horses uh, was a teamster because he drove a team. This is right, a team. exactly. And that term has developed and just stayed around. And today we have people that drive the modern mules and wagons as tractor trailers, and they're driven by the Teamsters. And that's where that term, the Teamsters, came Interesting. from. Interesting. So as we're riding, I notice that um, I know a little bit about horses, but not so much mules. They have a fairly large set of ears. What is the significance of that? Well, first it comes from the father with the donkey. He has a big set of ears, a little bit longer. But the real purpose, one of the reasons a mule is much more functional than a horse, like for example in Death Valley, pulling those heavy loads, horses wouldn't be able to hold up as well. And the reason is that the ears act like a heat exchanger. The blood comes up through those ears and the wind blows across them, and that cools the animal better than the short ears on a horse. And the donkey, he lives in the desert mostly, the wild burrow, and he's evolved with bigger ears to help keep him cool. And the second part of that is, is it helps scare off the lions and the tigers and the bears that might be coming after him. The little donkey can't run very fast, but when he puts those big ears up, it's intimidating. It looks intense. And so the mule gets a little of that also. Interesting. So as I noticed, we've picked up speed a little bit. Yes. You said they tend to like this speed better. How, how what is their average speed or what do they? We're going about seven and a half miles an hour right now. If I got out my telephone and put the GPS right? on, I'm cruising about seven and a half miles an hour. They walk at about three miles an hour. When they're walking, they build muscle because this carriage is harder to pull at yes. a slow speed. When they're trotting, they build cardio. Got it. And so I like to mix it up real good. But if I gave them the free hand, they're going to trot. And there's a slow trot called a working trot. And then there's a faster trot called a road trot. They, if I let them go, they would road trot. So they, they kind of determine what speed they're going to go, unless no. you tell them. No, uh, never. I always determine what speed you, okay, and so where they're going to go. Uh, absolutely. I do not let them choose anything. In fact, if we're going down the road and it's going to fork and they decide to go to the right, if it doesn't matter to me, I'm going to make them go to the left because I want them to know Got they it. have to do what I tell them. Got it. This is not an option for them. You know, it's, it's they have to do. We t I try to get along, I try to make it as pleasant for them. These girls like to do this, believe me. Right. If I got out this carriage, they would certainly want to get in here and go. I, I was showing Ted earlier how they will step over to get into the hook to this. I don't even have to ask, right. they just step up they to this carriage. They just love it. Yeah. And so uh, that's the way it is. They like their job. If you treat them right, they'll, they'll be great to you. And if you abuse them, they'll never forget it. Yeah. How hard is it to drive uh, these two mules? Well, if you never did it before, it can be quite complex because they're trained to my voice and my idiosyncrasies. My wife will tell you there's plenty. But anyhow, <laughs> why don't we try? Okay. Why don't you take the mules and drive them and see how we do? Okay, we'll, we'll okay. switch hands. Okay. It's relatively easy. The main thing is, around all animals, whether you're driving or working with them, is stay calm. Yes, because they sent you. They Absolutely. If somebody on here started screaming, oh my God, blah, 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 they got all excited, you could see them immediately animate, and that could cause troubles. So, uh, you know, being calm, cool, collected. If something runs out, if barking dogs, a pack of dogs come out to chase, you just stay calm with them. It's okay, girls, it's okay. Get on out of here, and that's why I carry the whip. You might yes. wonder why the whip. It's to keep dogs at bay. Safe for safety of them, yeah. more or less. 
Well, I'm gonna pass the reins over, but what an experience this has been. <laughs> G, G. Good girls, ho. As That's we conclude girl. our exclusive tour of the Grove Creek Mule Farm with Mr. Stutzman, the Mule Man, we have a little bit of uh, a fact that, that we can walk away with today that I bet you the um, teachers in school said, um, uh, would not know. A mule is the only animal on earth that if everyone died right now, every male, every female was dead, it would not affect the future population at all. And the reason is because you always go to a donkey and a horse. So that's a unique There's fact about a mule. There's always gonna be a mule. Always gonna be a mule. That concludes this episode. We'll see you next week.